Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. So a few years ago, my husband and I read a book called The Little Book of Huga, Danish Secrets to Happy Living. Denmark is rated the number one happiest country in the world year after year, and the Danish author explores why that is. This concept of huga or coziness, comfort, and how the Danes value togetherness, family, community, and they just live very intentionally. This book is really inspiring to us, and we related a lot to the principles of the Danish lifestyle. So when we went to visit my family in England, we were all looking to travel together to a country that none of us had ever been to. And Luke and I suggested Denmark. It was a go. Denmark did not disappoint and Copenhagen was one of the coolest places we've been to. What really struck us was the whole vibe of the city. It was quiet because so many people rode their bikes. I mean, I was amazed at how many bikes there were. They were everywhere. There were more bikes than cars, which made the city less noisy, chaotic, and polluted. It was also incredibly clean and safe, and even the public transportation was really nice. We stayed in a beautiful Scandinavian design Airbnb outside of Copenhagen in an area called Orestad. Also, I know I'm going to not pronounce any of these Danish words correctly, so forgive me in advance for that. The Airbnb was lovely and the decor resembled a lot of our own style, so we felt right at home. And the Airbnb was only about a 10 minute walk to the public transportation that took us all around the Copenhagen area and beyond. And we were thankfully able to take Zion all around with us in the stroller. And I was amazed at how child friendly the public transportation was. There were elevators everywhere for strollers and lots of people even took their bikes on the public transportation too. One of the things we did and I would highly highly recommend if you're ever wanting to be a tourist and visit the city of Copenhagen is to get the Copenhagen card. It is a one-time fee and you pay for as many days as you are staying there. The cost includes all public transportation and entrance into tons of different attractions. And you can view an entire map of the city and what's available on an app, which is really convenient. Because of this, we are trying to hit up as many things as possible in our short five days we were there. And now I'm going to try to pack everything we did in this short video. <laughs> the first day we headed into Copenhagen, and if you haven't heard me say this before, one of my favorite things is brunch. Right outside of our stop from the public transportation was a place called Emery's. They're a chain coffee shop and bakery, and we saw them other places around the city, but oh my goodness, it was good. We went there at least three times and got multiple chocolate croissants, and oh my gosh, the chocolate croissants were so good. Their lattes, breakfast, it was delicious. The boat tour took you all around the city and it just had really breathtaking views and you got a little bit of history too as you went along. It did rain while we were on the boat but thankfully there was a covered area so we could squeeze into it and take shelter. New Hound, which is probably Copenhagen's most iconic picturesque scenes, it did not disappoint. It's so much more pretty in person than in photos. And did you know that Danish author Hans Christian Andersen actually lived there? The botanical garden was beautiful. It included an outdoor area and then also had a dome-like structured indoor area. Inside the botanical garden, you could climb up the spiral staircase and reach the top. And then it gave you these beautiful views all around and you get this experience of being immersed in the plants. It was incredible. They also had a butterfly exhibit, which was fun to walk around and see all the different varieties of butterflies. We tried to get them to land on us, but we weren't successful. <laughs> They also had a little coffee and ice cream stand at the gardens and we got some ice cream, even though it was raining a little bit. <laughs> we also visited the planetarium, which housed really neat exhibits, as well as a dome theater where we watched Apollo 11. It was really fun. On one rainy afternoon in the city, my husband and I went underground to a little quaint coffee shop and enjoyed a cup of hot tea and a latte. And in that moment, wearing my warm baba sweater and drinking hot tea, cuddling my baby while it was raining outside, I feel like I fully understood the essence of huga. That is something that I really treasure and I just love those memories. And one day we took a train, which was paid for by the Copenhagen card, by the way, outside of the Copenhagen area toward the sea to visit a castle called Kronborg Slot. The train ride was only about 45 minutes and was pleasant with incredible views of Denmark. There was a field of yellow. I'm not quite sure what flower plant that was, but it was breathtaking. 
and the castle itself was really cool and the area around it was beautiful we enjoyed a packed lunch picnic and then went to walk around the Kronborg Slot castle which had a ton of history Kronborg Slot was actually the castle known as Elsinore in Shakespeare's play Hamlet pretty cool. The Maritime Museum was in that same area. It was one of the most unique museums I've personally been to. First of all, the museum itself was shaped like a giant boat, which was such a cool architectural design. And I loved all of the unique Danish things in the gift shop, like the wooden boats and kids toys. They made an exhibit out of the striped sailor shirts they had available in the gift shop, which I loved. And the museum is also a great place to take kids. They had a little classroom art area where it looked like they taught classes there. And they also had supplies to make your own origami boats. I tried but failed, but it was so fun. And they had an entire kid-friendly area that was like a unique playground. It was really cool. It had slides, hammocks, a net jungle gym, and a bunch of other fun things. There also was a tattoo area with just ink pen, by the way, and we attempted to trace the tattoos for each other. I gave Zion a tattoo too, which said, I heart mom. And all the miniature replicas of the boats around the museum were really cool. And overall, the museum was just a really fun thing to do and to spend an afternoon in. The Round Tower is in the heart of the city of Copenhagen and exactly what it sounds like, a round tower. It's a bit of a walk up the tower, but halfway up they have a neat art gallery and cafe area to rest a while if you'd like. And once you get toward the top, there's a very narrow spiral staircase. The trek is totally worth it though because the views are incredible. Up at the top you get a 360 degree vantage point of the city of Copenhagen that is absolutely stunning. And right outside the round tower is a hot dog stand. The best hot dogs I personally ever had with beets and mashed potatoes and oh my goodness, it was super yummy. Tivoli Gardens was founded in 1841 and it is one of the world's oldest theme parks. It's actually where Walt Disney got a lot of his inspiration for, for his own Disney World. And it was really pretty and neat to walk around. It's definitely the prettiest theme park I've personally ever seen. Galipto Teket is an art gallery in the heart of Copenhagen. It was unlike any art gallery I had been to as there was a winter garden dome in the center of it that was so, so pretty and exquisite. There was so many cool artifacts there and famous art from Monet, Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Picasso. There were also a variety of sculptures too, and being in the presence of such beautiful art like that is just so inspiring and made me just want to go home and paint. <laughs> A few other art galleries and museums we visited was the National Museum of Denmark, which had a ton of artifacts like mummies, which were a little bit creepy too. A cool place to go if you're a history buff. I also thoroughly enjoyed the National Gallery of Denmark, which is the country's largest art museum. And it was three levels, so we just pick and chose which exhibits we wanted to see. Some iconic pieces I was able to see in person were from Matisse, Picasso, Rubens, Rembrandt, and many others. Being able to see these amazing works of art up close that I had studied in my art history classes was just a really special experience for me. Christian Borg Palace is smack dab in the center of Copenhagen and houses offices for the current government. It's just crazy how much history a city and a place can have and how you can mix it in with modern day. Like they're still using that building today. And yeah, there's just not many places like that in America. One of my favorite places we visited was Rosenberg Castle. It's definitely something that's hard to describe unless you've seen it in person, but it was breathtaking inside and outside. There were so many different rooms with tons of history, floor to ceiling architecture and gold everywhere. They just don't make things like that anymore. And the castle also houses armor, weapons, and crown jewels that were just so beautiful to look up close and see just the detail in these crowns. And also the grounds around the castle were so lovely and made for just a beautiful stroll. 
We did try to do a bit of shopping while we were there in Copenhagen on many occasions. We would try to go shopping in almost every shop we wanted to go to had closed early or wasn't open. I read that in the little book of Huga that the Danes value family time and often don't let families with children work past 4 p.m. We did find one cool store in the outdoor mall that had more unique, less touristy items. And my husband found these cute little minimalist wooden birds that are now perched on his desk at home. <laughs> So that basically sums up everything we did in and around Copenhagen. And honestly, looking back at all these videos makes me just want to go back. We loved it so much. Actually, while we were still there, Luke and I were looking up long-term Airbnb so we could come back and stay for a month or two. We keep talking about it, so that's something we hope to do in the future or we could always move there. One of the two. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's really fun being able to document our travels and share them with you. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already, follow us on Instagram, and check out our new website, creativeforeden.com. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.